All right, class, we are in chapter one. In chapter one, a little bit is going to be a review, but for the most part, we'll start adding new stuff. Uh, inverse functions and all the different functions. We're going we're gonna to look at uh, something called mama and papa functions. I don't like that. All those guys. And then we're going to look at uh, transformations. So a lot of good stuff happening in chapter one. Well, as we get our way through other stuff here. So first things first. Chapter one, 1.1 1 .1 is rectangular coordinates. You guys know this. I believe so. You guys have, this is what the book says. Holy That's a totally lot better. Okay, now it projects on the screen. 1.1 1 .1 rectangular coordinates. So yes. Yeah, so absolutely, right here. Chair for you. Waiting. So rectangular coordinate system. I uh, should tell you guys a story where it came from. So do you guys remember doing geometry? And you guys, well, some people do. <laughs> um, do you guys remember doing a straight edge and a compass? Remember that? That's kind of like all the tools you had. Like, look, you have straight edge and compass, that's all you get. And so when the Greeks used to do that, that's how they used to do geometry. Geometry was just, you got the straight edge of something, and you got this little awesome, too cool technology, like called a compass. And so they constructed everything based upon that stuff. We're good? Notice there's no numbers there at all. So they're drawing something. They're making circles. They're making lines. They're making um, curves. But they're not thinking about numbers in the process. We're good? Then you have algebra. Algebra is all about numbers. Algebra is you're computing numbers. You put, you plug in a three into this equation. We're good? That's algebra. And those two things used to be totally different from one another. They were not even called math. They were just different. We're good? And so in the 1500s, there was a guy named uh, Descartes. Descartes, he's also the guy that said, uh, I think, therefore, I am. I am, yeah. I was in a song about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Technically, it should be, I doubt, therefore, I am, because that's what he was doing. But that's the argument. So what he, uh, what he did is he fused geometry and algebra together. And that's why we have lines. That's why we have this. This was for many, many times, uh, for many, many years, actually. This is called the uh, Cartesian coordinate plane because it was named after Descartes. We just call it rectangular coordinates. Easier way to do it. It's like, this is the one with like a C shape, right? Like like yes, awesome. Uh huh. So you guys talk to me right here. Boom. That little guy in the middle is called the origin. Origin. Yeah. That's cool. I know. So we have quadrant, uh, let's see, we have quadrant one on our hands, and it's, it's made by um, Roman numerals. We, we put Roman numerals there. What quadrant one is so special is because the x coordinate and the y coordinate are positive. Then we have quadrant two going against the clock, counterclockwise. Then this quadrant, the x coordinate is negative and a positive. Then we have quadrant three, still Roman numerals. And it's both negative in quadrant three. And then we have quadrant four. Positive, negative. Cool. OK. And then whenever we have a coordinate, and let me just draw it in quadrant one real quick here. We name it as the x coordinate, or the horizontal shift, and then the vertical shift. Are we good? So there's that little stuff there. OK. Don't need to write all that stuff down, right? But if you're doing notes, just put 1.1 .1 rectangular coordinates. And if you want to draw this little piece out, that's fine too. Okay, you guys tell me if I'm going too fast. We good? Otherwise, keep on going. I kind of have a sense of where people are writing and all the good stuff here. Wait, are we going to be graphing? Absolutely. So just a little bit here. Okay, so let's go with it. And this is all from the textbook itself, a little more complete explanation. Okay. And then tell me if I need to go back. I can go back as well here. So plot these. Hey, there it is. Cartesian coordinate. So 
to give the whole thing to Descartes here. So this one, uh, you don't need to really write them down. As long as you can just graph them, that's fine. A of four is pretty easy. Six is a little bit more challenging, that's all. Right there, so zero, zero, you can label that. Three, one, negative two, four, and, neg and one, negative one. Graph those real quick. And then the more complicated one would be right here. So give you, ah, what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds here. Graph number four, we'll check our answers. You don't have to draw like a line, do you? Nope, no lines, just uh, dots themselves. All right, so let me start here. I should have dots, so you should have dots at zero, zero. And then I guess we should label these out. Looks like the biggest number I have is four. So I'm gonna make everything a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Oh. Sorry, class, let me just check something real quick here. Let's... All right, three, one, here we go to one, two, three. So you go to the right, and you guys talk to me if this is, uh, you totally forgot, right? Talk to me about that, but I think for the most part we remember. Okay, negative two to the left, four up. I got my next dot right over here. And how about one negative one? Got my last dot down here. Are we good? Is that matches what you guys have? Yes. Oh, and not on the desk though. This is why there is this. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Whew. Got my heart palpitations going, man. Okay. And the next one's a little more difficult. Try this yourself first. Go for number six. Ooh. Can't read the numbers of the fractions. I will zoom in. All right, and there is a two, yeah. Um, the last coordinate, there is a called improper fractions, and those ones you probably should have to convert into mixed numbers first, or at least in your mind, at least in your head. All right, give you guys 30 seconds for this one. Copy them down already as well, maybe. And let me get back to this guy. I think. Yeah, so let's see. I, I would uh, make them more like a zoomed in graph here, but I am having. There it is. That's weird. Do you have to get him into my pen? We're good there. Hey. We're good. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, go. All right. Depends. So this one, I still see the four is the biggest. So I'm going to go like this. So a little bit more zoomed in, right? So I can show you the, where the fractions are here. So this one's still nice. This is one to the right. And we're going to go down just a third. So you should have a dot like right over here somewhere. 
go three fourths to the right. So not not get to one yet, and then we're gonna go up one, two, three. So right there, not hitting one yet. All right, negative three, one. So one, two, three, and then up one, two, three, four. You should have a dot there. And here's the fun part. These guys are improper fractions. In mathematics, what we do is we always want to convert improper fractions into mixed numbers before we do this here. So three goes into four, one and third. So this would be negative one and one third. Two goes into three, one, so one and a half, perfect. So here we go, negative one and a third more, we're about right here. And then down one and a half, we're about right there. So good, you should have a little dot in quadrant three. Are we good there? Okay, perfecto. Okay, so let's talk about quadrants now. Oh, when did you get it right? Yeah. Determine the quadrants that they are located in. And so let it write, let you guys write it down first here. I probably should write it down just so we have notes, the same notes as me here. So look at this here, x is less than zero, then we're also looking at y is equal to zero, right? Because everything hinges on x's and y's, right? So back to your uh, first slide, when is x gonna be less than zero? When, is, when are the x's negative? Two, yeah, two and three, is that right? That's when x is less than zero? So that fulfills this criteria. And then when is y less than zero? Three, four, perfect. So there's one quadrant that fulfills both criteria. That is quadrant three is cool. Yep. Three is the answer there. Okay. For number 12, are we okay with quadrant three? Okay. Cool, Charlie. Okay. This one's a little bit more of a toughie, just to th sort of think through. When is X greater than four? Go with that here. So if we start labeling stuff, remember X is the one that goes out horizontally. So one, two, three, four. So anything beyond this. So five is good. So any dots over here are great. And that's quadrant one stuff, right? But then also X is still greater than four here. Y is less than zero, but still X is greater than four. So everything here. So looks like quadrant one and quadrant four and Abe is right. Okay, so there it is. Some basic stuff about graphs, plot lines, and think about quadrants themselves. Let's jam to the next piece. So I have a question. If we just did a review of algebra one, oh, that wasn't algebra one. I'm like, wouldn't they just have all the review together? This yeah, this is kind of beginning with now new things plugged in here. Find the distance between the two points. And in this case, the little special note is that you can probably find the distance very well because they are horizontal from each other. Oh, sure, sure. And the distance between the points. Could be. Uh -huh. They're covered in the same stuff as on Interesting. Okay. Okay, we'll get there. So for horizontal distances, it is pretty easy for horizontal distances. If you graph this, you can actually do it by graphing. So one comma four is about what one. One, one, two, three, four. Everybody agreed there? And if you go eight, four, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. And then you still go up four. So notice there's a distance this way, all the way to here. 
And if it's if they are horizontal or vertical away from each other, we can just count the notches that they are away, right? Are we okay with seven? Since I saw it on Owen's dry erase board. And so there's seven, seven units away. Uh-huh. Isn't there a formula for this? It's like x sub n one minus y sub n one over s sub n one. Yeah, let's do that here. Okay. Let's do this here. So Owen was saying, you know. There is a formula, it's called a distance formula, but it's made for this little guy right here. Notice if we would if we would move this down, let's say like this, we'd have the first accordant to be one four, but then like the other one would be down here. And do you guys any and I can always draw little rec, uh, triangles from one to the other. You can always do that. But what we are interested in is doing this, we're getting interested in getting the distance right here. Does anybody know something about a right triangle, something about the sides of a right triangle? A squared, B squared, C squared. I think so, yep. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now the little question is this. We're trying to get C, is that right? Mm -hmm. So how about if we just take the square root of both sides? Everybody agreed there so far? C is equal to A squared plus B squared. That's a Pythagorean theorem, is that right? One little tiny difference though. My only question is this, how do we calculate A when we're on two separate coordinates right here? Talk to me there. So if this is A, how far is A based upon, hey, you know what, let's, let's label these. Let's label this as X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and A got it as? Uh, tell me if you guys agree. Here to here, this is just the difference of the x coordinates. So it's x2 minus x1. Will that make sense? So if this is 1 right here and that was still 8, it'd still be 7. You just subtract the x coordinates away from each other. Are we good? Well, I'll get to the formula in just a second. How about this one? How about b? Yeah, in fact, it's kind of interesting. Y1 minus Y2 or Y2 minus Y1, uh, technically they're the same because you're, you're going to square them anyways. Mm -hmm. So we normally write them as Y2 minus Y1. Perfect, I think we got it. You know what? There's some guy a long time ago named Pythagoras that figured it out as well. So he learned, yeah, look at that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We take that and we say, you know what? If that's true, if that's how we do a triangle like this. But our triangle does not have just A and B. Our triangle is just a difference of coordinates right here. And so the one that you want to write down is this one right here. So the distance formula. So writing it down. So if you have a point, and let me draw it out as well here. So if you have a point out in space, and let me draw it in the first quadrant just to sort of to be a little easier here. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, the distance. So we really don't even need the triangle anymore. As long as we can put the coordinates in, that's all I need. We good? That's the powerfulness of formulas here. Say again? Zoom in. Absolutely. Yeah, please. I tend to forget the zooming in, so you guys help me to remember. Ah, that's because the Pythagorean theorem, uh, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what we do is we just take a square to both sides. Maybe. Here, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Good on the uh, so Camille, real quick here on the Pythagorean theorem. Whenever you look at a, just a generic triangle, if that's a and that's b and that's c, it is always a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. But then we're not interested in finding c squared. We're interested in finding c, just c by itself. 
So what we do is we take the square root here, we take a square root here, and these two cancel. So then you're finally left with almost the same thing as we had over here, except now we've just included coordinates inside it as well. Okay, are we good there? Okay, let's jam. So find, actually we won't even need to do all that. It says find a length of each of the sides and then show that they satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do it by the distance formula first, and then we'll see what we'll come up with here. So by the distance formula, we would do this here. I'm, let me write out the distance formula. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so if we did it by this, we would get, and you have to label them. So it doesn't really matter which one you label is uh, one or two, but as long as you're consistent. So I'm gonna label this guy right here as x1, y1. Label this one as x2, y2. All right, so give me some numbers here. Yeah, we're going to get to 12 and 5, but it's 13, what, minus 1? Yeah, it's the x coordinates subtracting each other. And then on the other side, it's going to be the y coordinates subtracting each other. So it's the 5 minus 0. Let's see, the 12 minus that would be 12 to the second power. This is 5 minus 0 is 5 to the second power. This would be 144 plus 25. Ooh, okay, anybody got that one? 169. Oh, perfect. I love it when it works out great. Cool. All right, we're good there. So then if we were to do this, notice where the numbers are coming from. This little piece right here, if we did it by Pythagorean theorem, we would be doing 13 minus 1, or this length right here is actually 12. So there, there's your 12 that comes from 13 minus 1. This right here is 5, but it really came from 5 minus 0. Okay, are we good there? So, did I go there, Dylan? Question? But after one, I want to the formula. The formula that I think the element, or element, the only board is like x one minus x two. Yeah. Is does does that work as well? Ah, good, good, good. So, formula oh, no, that is uh, that is going to be for slope. That is how steep a line is. Ah, uh, sure. So the distance for the x x value only is twelve. The distance for the y values is is five. And then when you do the Pythagorean theorem, you should get thirteen right here. So we're trying to find that thirteen. So Dylan, are we good now? Yeah. With that, perfect. We do have another formula that Owen did not write down. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, instead of finding the Instead of finding the distance of two points, what we sometimes do in geometry is we find the exact middle of the two points. And so here's the middle of the two points. It's called the midpoint formula. Yep, uh huh. So how do you get the middle of something, right? You, what you do is you take one, take the other, you add it up, and divide it by two. And so what we do is we just do it for every single coordinate. So midpoint formula, there it is. It's x1 plus x2 divided by 2. y1 plus y2 divided by 2. 
And we'll see if we can finish this up here. All right, I got an easy one and then I got a tough one for you. And then we're gonna see if we get to a geometry. I think we might just be able to do it here. Let's see if we can. Okay, are we good with the formula? Wrote it down, we're good to go. Dylan, are we good? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right, easy one, easy problem, let's go. Can you find the midpoint of this right here? If you need a graph it, that's fine, but really just want to find the midpoint. So I'm gonna graph it for you guys, but you guys can take a look at it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to the left, four down, and I'm right here. Then I have a two, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is here. So I'm looking at this line here. I don't want to find the distance. That's not what I'm interested in. I am interested in the midpoint, where the middle is. So let's do some thinking here. Um, middle is going to be in quadrant two, most likely. Is that right? So I should see a negative and a positive. Go negative seven plus two divided by two. I'm gonna go negative four plus eight divided by two. Tell me if you guys agreed. Cool. And this one's gonna be five halves. This one is going to be. I don't know, Charlie. Can I pick on you here? What's the other one gonna be? Four over two. And this one's two. This one's nice. Okay, so real quick here, if you're trying to find, if you're trying to give me the value of it, then we would just leave it as five over two comma five. If you, I say graph it, please, and then then you probably want to figure out what five over two would be. Yes. It's negative five halves. Right? Negative five halves, even better. All right. Cool. All right. And then does that make sense? It's supposed to be in quadrant two and it is. Charlie, is that what you're going to say too? The negative five? Thank you. Keep me on my toes. All right. That's the easy one. Are we good? Now we're going to go with the more challenging ones. All yours here. Oh, of course. Like throwing fractions into you and all that good stuff here. Whew. Oh. A little bit of a tuck here, all right. All right, I think you've copied it down already. Go back to here. And so graphing it real quickly here. So negative one third, man, these are all fractions here. So negative one third, negative one third is by put me like right here. And then negative one sixth, negative, oh man, that puts me like right there. So I'm in quadrant three. So I expect both answers to be negative. Did you guys get both answers negative? Okay. Now the fun part begins. Let's go with it here. Negative one third plus a negative one sixth over two, negative one third plus a negative one half over two. Hopefully started that way. And how many are done? Raise your hand if you're done. Whoa, okay, I better hurry up. Okay.
So I'm going to do a little bit of work here. I'm going to multiply this guy by two over two. Is that right? Because I need common denominators there. And let's do the work itself here. So I'm going to do the x coordinate first here. So that's going to be a negative two over six plus a negative one over six over two. And if we can probably even do it out the side if we need to here, but this is going to be a negative three over six over two. Is that right? You know what? Can I change it up? I'm going to change it up. I don't like to do it this way because then this is so much space gone here. Let's do it the way we do it, more like an algebra. So negative two over six plus negative one over six over two makes negative three over six over two. Are we good there? And this guy's gonna reduce right here to a negative one half over two. And this is gonna be negative one half multiplied by the flip of this around, is that right? It's the two that became a one half now. So tell me if you guys agree, you guys got a negative one fourth for the first, for the X coordinate. We'll put it together just a bit here. For the Y coordinate, let's take a look at the Y coordinate. Y coordinate is one third plus negative one half over two. We have to multiply this by, this one, this one has to go by two, right? Two over two. Common denominator of six, I would assume, is that right? Yeah. And so how about a negative two sixths plus a negative three sixths divided by two? Negative five sixths divided by two, and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna say negative five sixths multiplied by reciprocal here, and talk to me. Negative five. <laughs> okay, final answer. Who? That was a toughie. So, and does it make sense that both of them are negative? They are in quadrant three. That would be the middle of the of the group there. Okay, and, and then we have. Let's see. Let's do one more. I think we have time for one more. And then we're just left with another single problem afterwards here. Okay, the other thing that we do in Cartesian coordinates is we can have figures inside them and we can move them around. So this one right here, you can shift polygons anytime you like. And so what we want to do is we want to figure out the vertices of these guys right here. I want to figure out this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, don't tell by the graph that you have it. What you want to do is you want to think about this right here. The top one started off at negative 3, 6. We went 6 units to the right, and then we're going to go 3 units down. Are we good? So if I go 6 units to the right, and I'm at, oh, hold on, which one's going to affect? These guys, right? It's going to affect the x-coordinates, right? If I'm at negative 6 and I go 6 units to the right, talk to me, or am I going to be a positive 3 now? Right, because I shift it over, positive three. Then I'm gonna go down. So this has to be a positive three. So why at negative three? I was at negative three, okay. and I shifted to the right six units. But then, it's not the other coordinate. the negative three went to the right one. No, that's the corner, that's the corner to the right corner. Yeah, uh -huh. uh -huh. we're just doing the tops right now. Yeah, the top one. And then we're gonna go three units down. So we're, we really are just gonna subtract three from the six. Are we good? So moving horizontally, we do stuff to the X. Moving vertically, we do this stuff to the Y. So in this case, six minus three is three. Everybody agree that the top corner is three, three now? Okay, let's do the rest here. Let's do the, this one right here. We are just going to add six to the X coordinate. We're gonna subtract three to the Y coordinate. All yours, negative one plus six. Five. Three minus three. Zero. Zero. And it looks like a zero right there. Perfect. Okay, this one again, plus six minus three. A negative five plus six is a one. That makes sense because there's a one right there. And then three minus three is zero. Good there. Cool. And then last one here. Negative three comma zero is what we start off with. Gonna add six here, subtract three there. 
three. Negative three, I would go with that. And done. Are we good? All right, and the only other thing to do, I just want to finish up the section. We're pretty much done with the section here, is uh, go back to the geometry days when we did um, figures, these guys right here. So it's in the textbook as well, but it's all the stuff. Again, the quick review of geometry figures. Uh, I do have two homework questions on, on, on there that you're gonna have to plug it in and do here. <laughs> so I'm not gonna zoom on these here. We good because uh, they're just there. They're in the textbook. Look them up, please. Here, these guys are your two-dimensional objects, 2D, and then these move on to 3D. So with 3D, you have volume because it can hold stuff, right? Uh, with two-dimensional, you have area, and then whatever else you have. So perimeter, circumference, whatever. There. Okay. At that point, I'm glad we were able to make it. We finished up with 1.1, so we'll do 1.2 on Monday.